The book of Joshua, session number 48. And this is Joshua chapter 16. We've uh, looked at the portion for Caleb. We've looked at the portions for Judah. Now let's look at the portions of Manasseh and Ephraim. And here just a quick history tour. So remember now. Israel, Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, had 12 sons. Joseph, representing uh, in the prophetic Messiah himself, Joseph wore the coat, coat of multicolors. And uh, go back to the whole study on Joseph in Genesis to really remember all the messianic pictures in the life of Joseph. So he had a dream about um, his brothers and his family bowing before him, and his brothers eventually threw him in a pit, re- re- um, resembling throwing him into the deep, dark um, grave. Um, they rejected him. They sold him off like Judah sold off Yeshua. And out of the loins of Joseph, who married then an Egyptian um, priest's daughter, out of his loins came Ephraim and Manasseh, representing the mixed um, humanity. We who are spread out into every tribe, nation and tongue, we who grew up in Egyptian sun god religion, we who didn't know our forefathers, Abram, Isaac and Jacob, we who um, understood that somewhere in our history we worship the God of Abraham, but now we live in Egypt and we've got an Egyptian mum and an Egyptian uh, grandfather and our father even looks like an Egyptian God because out of the ashes of Joseph's life he was crowned the ruler of all of Egypt, the most prominent at the time. So, out of the loins of Joseph, Joseph means to increase. And out of his loins came Ephraim and Manasseh. And Ephraim and Manasseh was in the ten northern tribes. So, at the time of um, David's grandson, uh, Rehoboam, the kingdom of David split up. And the ten northern tribes um, were called the house of Israel sometimes called the house of Joseph, sometimes called the house of Ephraim. So, the house of Ephraim was then taken into captivity by the king of Assyria and from there on never returned to Israel, but was scattered all over the world into all the Gentile nations. Judah was exiled to Babylon and came back after 70 years. You know the whole history by now. So, when we read in Joshua 16, the portion of Manasseh and Ephraim. It is amazing because it is the it is amazing because it is the um, fulfillment of covenant. Not only to the physical um, Ephraim who inherited a physical piece of land where the borders of the land had physical names. But it's also, just like Joseph was prophetic for Messiah and Ephraim was prophetic for the Gentile nations of the seed of Jacob spread into the nations and the the seed of Abraham. God said to Abraham, you'll be the father of many nations. So the, the prophetic meaning of the physical borders that was given as an inheritance to Ephraim is also prophetic and symbolic and messianic. For every believer in Messiah Yeshua that has left it, has come out from under the deception of the tree of knowledge and is now walking back to the promised land. Not yet physically, but spiritually we are walking back to the promised land. Yes, we are going to physically walk back or maybe fly back when Yeshua takes some of us into the clouds. Those of us that will um, not have died yet, but those of us who have died will be yeah, will be taken up into the clouds, but those of us who survive until the end will probably start with a second exodus, start walking in a certain direction. Not now. I'm not saying go to Astrona. You know the prophecies that we've discussed for so many years now. So Ephraim, the physical borders also represents the spiritual not borders, but the promise locked up in the Hebrew names of the physical borders of Ephraim is an encouragement and a confirmation of God's promises and a confirmation that he never lies 
and everything. They only lived there for a while, remember? And then they started rebelling, and then God allowed all the um, enemies and the kings of the enemies to come and, um, you know, make war with them, and up to the point where they were taken into exile, and then they were the house of Judah were under the rule of the Roman Empire. You know, it's a, it's a whole his, history lesson prophesied by God from the beginning. When you open your history books now, you see exactly everything that God um, warned about and prophesied about. So, looking at the physical promises of the physical borders for Ephraim, we are looking at the physical promise for the physical implementation and fulfillment of God's promises of us who is the scattered lost house of Ephraim, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the house of Joseph. And every one of these borders given and every one of these borders given to um, Ephraim as an inheritance has a meaning to you and me in our lives today. Because the New World Order system has been setting up for the last 6,000 years. They have their roots in the same place we have our roots. Our roots is in Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And their roots is in um, uh, Esau, Ishmael and all the evil brothers. Um, we have our root in the tree of life. They've got their roots in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We have our root in Yahuwah. They have their root in the fallen angel called Hashatan, the enemy, the accuser, the adversary of God. We have our Torah, they have their Georgian Guidestones. We have our Bible, they have the satanic Bible that says, do what you want, you satisfy yourself. They have their leaders and false prophets and government systems. And we have the same. We have our leadership system where we are the living stones of the temple. Yeshua is the head of the body and we all serve each other together. And we have leaders that, that um, lead us like Joshua was leading us in the physical, always being a representation of Yeshua himself. And we follow Moses out of Egypt and we follow Joshua into the promised land. Um, we have teachers, we have counselors, we have... Um, people that have the talent and um, uh, the gift of, of healing and prayer and intercession and encouragement and hospitality. Um, I think that's all in Romans 12, um, or was it Hebrews 12? Um, Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, I think is all the gifts. Um, they have their um, spiritual forces in high places. They have their um, spiritual forces in high places. We have the same. So, so this is a, a war between good and evil, a war between um, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, the war between how we are traveling this last stretch of Earth's history up to the point where we will be crowned, where we will receive the crown of eternal life. But we have to go through the history. We have to go through the borders. We have to go through this whole journey from Egypt all the way back to the physical borders of the inheritance of Joseph and Ephraim and Manasseh. Uh, chapter 16, And the lot of the children of Joseph fell from Jordan by Jericho unto the waters of Jer uh, Jericho on the east, to the wilderness that goes up from Jericho throughout Mount Bethel. Um, in the next section, I will go through each one of these names of these borders. Um, but the verse 4 says, So the children of Joseph, the children of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, took their inheritance. And this is the inheritance we have. This is a promise of God we have. He cannot lie. He cannot change his promises. He didn't promise this to physical Ephraim alone. We are physical Ephraim. Even that comes out of the mouth of God all through the Old Testament, all through the New Testament. Joshua said, this is who I came from, the lost sheep of the house of, of Israel. There is an understanding that is 101% um, proved from Scripture. That from the beginning, from the time of time of Jacob's blessing, 
over Joseph and Ephraim. Ephraim's seed will be scattered in the midst of the earth. They, they will multiply like fish. And Yeshua made fisher, um, fishers of men out of his fishermen disciples. Everything is connected. We are the fish. We are the 153 fish pulled out of the oceans of people and nations. We are the fulfillment and the culmination of Deuteronomy 4 that says, you'll be scattered all over the midst of the earth. But if you remember my name and if you return back to me, I will gather you again. So we see in the names of the borders of the inheritance of Ephraim, how we are going through difficult things. How we are scattered far away from God through the journey, through the, the road map. We have a road map in the names of the borders of Ephraim that shows us how we are journeying, how we are walking from where we are now, from where we have come from, out of Egypt. Do you, do you remember when you came out of Egypt, out of sun god religion, out of men's traditions, out of Roman Catholic sun false antichrist system you see your journey from there to where we are now facing the giants facing the Canaanites who has taken over the promised land we are facing them and we are challenging them we are not afraid just like Caleb we are not afraid of the giants they can stand on the mountain of God all they want God will destroy them we'll take back the mountain of God we stand on the promises and the covenants of God even when we do go through periods in this end time, end time tribulations where we might even find ourselves in caves and hollow places, empty places where God is silent and everything is dark around us. But we remember we had to walk around Jericho for seven days in silence because God is gearing up and getting us ready and ensuring that we are trusting Him. And, and, and you're only trusting when you have a hope of something at the end. And you have a hope that He's with you during this journey. And what proof do we have that He's with us during the journey? For heck's sakes, <laughs> look at how He's explaining the journey to us thousands and thousands of years ago. And thousands of years ago. What makes we think what makes us think that he's not going to be with us through this journey? He's been with us since then. He knows every step of the way. He even gave every step of the way a name. And this system can set up all they want. We have the physical names of our step-by-step -step process through this journey, taking back the inheritance promised to Joseph. Joseph you wear the coat of many colors. Yeshua, you will wear the coat of many colors out of every tribe, nation, tongue, and color. The people will be gathered again back to you. And the robe of your kingly priestdom will be hanged upon your shoulders out of many colors. You will uh, restore and regather your Ephraim house. And you will reunite it with your Judah house. And we will all take our are not afraid of them anymore. The whole system is gearing up and gathering together to destroy all humanity in humans so that they can destroy all of God's creation. Father, to destroy all your intentions and all your plans that you've had when you created the Garden of Eden. As the Antichrist spirit that rules them, dictate to them, and have dictated since his first rebellion in heaven. But Father, this is impacting us here in 2022. The famines that's coming, no buying or selling, the persecution, because if we don't join in on this new world system, Father, we will face all these persecutions and all these troubles and all these dark times. And we have to ask ourselves, and I'm asking myself, is it worth it? Is it really going to be worthwhile? Being the only one to ask ourselves, and I'm asking myself, is it worth it? Is it really going to be worthwhile? Being the only one not having the genetic shot, the QR codes, the digital currency, radio frequency microchip, 
the biometrical in integration into the smart system, the meta world goggles, the technology, the smart devices in our house and the smart technology inside our bodies. Is it really going to be worth it being the only one on the fringes of society, expelled and ridiculed for still believing you are going to come back someday? Is it really worth it to lose everything to save my God-given spirit? Free your mandates and remain approved and accepted. I ask myself, is it really going to be worth it? How, how will we make it and you always answer father maybe it takes time because testing and purification of true faith does take time but you do answer how long did joseph have to wonder if all of this is really worth it genesis 37 to 40 and after all that after everything that joseph has gone through jacob blessed him through his two boys ephraim and manasseh with a double portion and that is prophetic for returning Ephraim, for the returning lost sheep of the house of Ephraim, Deuteronomy 4, verse 26 to 30. God will bring you again into the promised land. Jacob blessed Joseph. Genesis 48, verse 21. And how amazing... Genesis 48, verse 21. And how amazingly was that fulfilled when we read in the book of Joshua, chapter 16, verse 4. After so many years of slavery and... Then the, world, uh, the, the wandering father in the wilderness and your testing of our faith in the desert. I know all these prophecies, father. I do believe them. I am going to love you until I die or until I'm killed. But your prophecies through Joseph, through his life, through Daniel and Revelation, it's, it's all so spiritual. What about me in 2022? going into this one false God system right now. And I asked you to, to show me, give me an answer. And you opened my Bible at Joshua 16. And I started reading. The lot of the children of Joseph fell from Jordan by Jer to the wilderness that goes up from Jericho throughout Mount Bethel. And going out from Bethel to Luz, and passing along the borders of Arki to Ataroth, goes down westwards to the coast of Yafleti, unto the coast of Beth Heron, to Gezer, and the goings out thereof are up to the sea. So the children of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim, took their inheritance. And the border of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, was this. Even the border of their inheritance on the east side was Ataroth Adar, unto Beth Heron. And the border went out towards the sea to Mikmeta on the northern side. And the border went out eastwards unto Ta'anata Shalow, Ta'anath Shiloh, and passed by it on Yanoha. And it went down from Yanoha to Ataroth and to Naarath and came to Jericho and went out at Jordan. The border went out from Tapua westward unto the river Kana. And the goings out thereof were at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim by their families. Father, and I'm wondering... Why am I reading this? And as you have been teaching all of us at Two Trees in the Garden, we have to dig, take a spade and a shovel and dig into the mystery, into the hidden message you have for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. So I started finding the meanings of all these regions and all these towns and areas, the meanings of all these regions and all these towns and areas in the Hebrew and now I'm going to read for you what Father showed me what these borders are what the prophecy is 
for us who has come out of Egypt, learned about the sun god religion, but followed Moses through the wilderness, followed Joshua into the promised land, understanding that everything in Egypt and Babylon and in the wilderness journey is there for a reason. Verse 2, And going out from the house of God through to the almond tree, and that reminds me of the almond blossom of Aaron's staff, where the rulers within the camp of Israel tried to overpower Moses and Aaron. From the house of Al to the almond tree, past grounds, going westwards, verse 3, to escape <laughs> and be delivered. <laughs> wow. Unto the house of hollowness, where we have a part in. This is verse 3. Going down westward to the coast of Yaflati, unto the coast of Beth Heron, the nether, and to Gezer, and the going out there of is, is at the sea. We go westward to escape and we are delivered unto the house of hollowness, a house of loneliness, a house that is hollow like a cave, but we have a part in it. Verse 5, And the borders of the children of Ephraim according to their families was this, even the border of their inheritance on the east side was crowns of glory unto the house of hollowness. The sure house of hollowness. Yeshua says to follow me and leave all your family behind. If you don't love me more than anything else, you are not worth it. But I will reward you. No matter what you've lost, you will be rewarded 30, 60 and a hundred fold, fold. Crowns of glory. We follow through the house of hollowness. We follow unto the border on the east. Crowns of glory. Towards the sea, verse 6, towards the sea, to Mikmata, towards the sea, to a hiding place for a time, because there is a time to approach Shiloh. There's a time to approach Shiloh from the border of Mikmata unto Ta'anath Shiloh. Towards the sea, towards the hiding place, for a time to approach Shiloh, approach peace, Shiloh, Shalom, peace, and pass by it to Yanoha, pass by a time for Shiloh to come, and passing all the way up to Yanoha, Yanoha is Yah rests, Yahuwah himself rests, isn't this amazing? And here I'm wondering, Father, what is, what is, what is it to, to have a time to approach Shiloh? And I remember you showed me before Genesis 49 verse 10. You've shown all of us that does Bible studies. Genesis 49 verse 10. Genesis is all about the blessings of Jacob unto his twelve sons. And he blessed Judah, the royal tribe. And he said to Judah, the scepter of your feet, O Judah. This will never happen until Shiloh come. And who is Shiloh? He's the scepter. He's the king. He's the royal law giver that is born from between the feet of Judah. The woman in Revelation who gave birth to David's son, the son of David, the king of kings, Yeshua HaMashiach. Until he comes, and when he comes unto him, shall the gathering of the people be. What gathering? Well, we've been scattered according to Deuteronomy 4 verse 26 to 30. Because of our disobedience, because Ephraim is the mixed Egyptian blood with Hebrew. But out of every tribe, nation and tongue, we are called back to return like the prodigal son to the house of God. Our borders is the prodigal son to the house of God. Our borders, Ephraim's borders, is from the house of Al, Beth Al, 
to the borders of Luz, the, the staff blossom, the almond tree, and passing along the borders of Arki to Ataros, passing along the passing a long border, Arki, all the way to Ataros grounds, and goes down west towards Yaflati Escape, and then be delivered. Yaflati Escape to be delivered delivered unto Beth Horon, the house of hollowness, and to Gezer, our part in it, Gezer. But the borders of the children of Israel is this. On the east side is Ataroth Adar. The border of the east is the crowns of glory. Unto Beth Horon, to Mikmatat, the hiding place. On the north side and eastward towards the Anath Shiloh, a time to approach Shiloh. Because we are in this time where Shiloh is approaching. The Antichrist system will set up first. It has to happen so that Shiloh can approach. And he will gather all of us back and give us these borders of our promised inheritance. And then we'll pass by that. We'll go through the thousand years of the millennial reign of the king of priests, the prince of priests, um, the prince of peace. Shiloh prophesied in the beginning, the end, declared from the beginning, Genesis 49.10. And then Shiloh prophesied in the beginning, the end, declared from the beginning, Genesis 49.10. And then Yahuwah will come to rest. Revelation 21. The new Jerusalem with God, Yahuwah himself in it, will descend out of heaven like a bride, a chaste virgin. Look at Joshua 16, verse 7. It went down from Yanoha to Ataroth and to Naaraf and came to Jericho and went out at Jordan. I'm reading this in the prophetic. The Anoth Shiloh, remember the previous verse, all the way east to Yanoha. And the borders went down from Yahuwah rests to crowns to servant girl and came to the going down of the moon and went out to words to go down, to prostrate yourself, to worship. God is going to come down when Shiloh, when Shiloh's time has approached. God himself will come down and the crown of life will be given, given to the virgin bride. And she, her moon will go down. You know, the, the whole moon cycle of death, of menstruation will, will finish. And we will all at Jordan. Jordan means to go down, to prostrate yourself. Jericho means moon. Jordan means we will pass all that. The bright Naaraf. When, when Shiloh comes and Yahuwah rests with us, then the maiden, female servant, the moon, and we will have the marriage and we will prostrate ourselves, go down, bow before our God. Verse 8, The border went out from Tapua westward unto the river Kana, and the goings out thereof were at the sea. This is the inheritance. So the border went out from the apple city. You are the apple of my eye. Ay. The border went out from Tapu, Tapua, the apple city, westward unto the river Kana, westward unto the reeds, the reeds or the branches, the reeds or the branches that is to be obtained, that is to be um, gathered together. And now I, I don't have a choice. I have to go back to where Jacob blessed Ephraim and Manasseh through their father, Joseph. Genesis 49, verse 22. Verse 22. Because the board that went out from the apple of my eye unto my reeds, my branches, that I will gather back together again. Oh, let me now just find it. Genesis 
49, verse 22. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by the well, whose branches run over the wall. In this, um, in the Hebrew, this word for branches is but, and but has to do with a virgin daughter. And we know the wild branches of the olive tree through Joseph, through the house of Joseph, the ten northern tribes, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, sung, but believing the words of God through Moses again, returning to him again, facing all the giants and the, and the Egyptian and the Babylonian and the Assyrian king who, who took us into exile, facing all of that, facing the walls of Jericho, coming back into the promised land but enduring under the slavery of Pharaoh for now, enduring the wilderness journey and testing for now, learning to obey the Torah so that we are not deceived by the mark of the beast, by the one world government system that will all um, worship the beast and cause everybody to worship the image of the beast. And Satan gives him his his power and his throne of authority and his um, glory. And everybody worships the beast and worships um, the throne of authority and his um, glory. And everybody worships the beast and worships um, the devil who gives power unto the beast. But those who know their God, Daniel 11, will not follow the anti-Messiah that is prophesied in Daniel 11. Those who uh, ha obey the Torah and have the witness of Messiah, Revelation 12, verse 17, those will endure and have patience unto the end, but they are the ones against whom the dragon will fight, Revelation 14, verse 12. But we understand, Father, that your prophecies to Ephraim in the old, ancient, Old Testament books of Genesis and Joshua is teaching us that through this journey where you brought us up and out of Egypt and into the promised land, we have to get all the information we need. From the house of Yahuwah to the almond tree, passing the long borders all the way to crowns, going westward to escape and be delivered unto the house of hollowness where we have a part in border on east on the crowns of glory unto the house of hollowness towards the sea to a hiding place for a time to approach Shiloh peace and pass by it to the time where you are going to rest Yahuwah rest we go down we understand that Yahuwah rests and it goes down from Yahuwah rests to crowns, to the maiden servant, to the time of the moon going down and we prostrating ourselves before you from the apple city all the way to branches. This and we prostrating ourselves before you from the apple city all the way to branches. This is the inheritance of the tribes of Ephraim.